Transfer window may only be a week old. And while we have made some moves, I never thought it was going to be this hard to spend $13 million. But we've got our first competitive match coming up. It's the Super Copa de Costa Rica revenge against Cartagena. <laughs> That's right, my friends. They snuck a competitive match right in the middle of my spending spree. Welcome back to episode number 49 of the American Dream. I am Mr. Cellophane. If you've enjoyed the series so far, make sure to hit that like and subscribe. Feed the algorithm. Get this video out to as many people as possible. Please and thank you. Now that we've gotten that out of the way. Cartagena, yes, the team that we took on in the grand final of last year's opening stage. It was our first match in charge of Saprissa. Well, we got him again. Called ourselves a team meeting. It went well. The board and the fans think we're going to win. And we're going to get our first look at, well, our new team as a number of new faces have joined us as we went over in the last episode. Mohamed Conte is going to make his debut in goal. It's going to be a back four of Daniel Herrera still learning that left back position. Freddy Gonzalez and Nassim Innocenti are going to be in the central portion of that back line. Hugo Cordero going to get the start on the right hand side. The midfield two will be Steven Aquista and Federico Ramirez at the 10. Diego Moreira, no surprise. But new guys on either side of him as William Ramirez and Jose Pablo Espinosa will look to make their debuts with Edward Lopez leading the line. This team has been quite impressive so far in the preseason, but granted against lesser competition. We are seeking revenge against Cartagena. They stole the opening stage crown from us last year. Well, frankly, we gave it away having lost the first leg and really trying to get our sea legs under us in the second, which was our first match managed at Saprissa. I know I already mentioned that earlier, but it does Bear repeating. So we are underway, and I hope that we can pick up our first piece of hardware in our first full season at Saprissa. We've somewhat dominated play in the early going, picking up the first three shots of the match, but Cartagena has come back. Cordero with the first highlight of the match. Corner in, and Herrera's header is just a little bit too strong. It's going to sail over the crossbar, but a good early opportunity. Cordero to throw it in along the far side. We are in the white kits, by the way, if you hadn't figured that out. Aquista flipping it forward. Ramirez looking back post. Lopez back for Ramirez, and his header is going to be just a little bit too high as it whisks it itself off of the bar what a save being made by Conte as the ball is ultimately cleared Cartagena is looking to send it forward Gonzalez will play it away Montero into the middle Solis ends up with it up the left side Contreras deep into the middle and the save was made but it pops right to Luis Montero his first goal of the year because this is the first competitive match of the year and Cartagena takes a 1-0 lead Honestly, not 100% sure if there was anything that we could do here. Conte made a great save. Herrera went to close down Montero, but Montero just got there first. Conte still trying to recover from the initial save, so he was technically out of position. Unfortunate, but we do have plenty of time to battle back. Cartagena leading 1-0 after 45. Of course, the first match of the year gives us the first opportunity to lay into the team a little bit over the half we're going to go a little bit more attacking as we look to take the play to Cartagena in this second half Amud throwing it in but Marrero will take over into the box Espinosa into the middle Ramirez grabs it and his shot is going to go off target but a perfect opportunity a bit of a sitter one of the things that we are having an issue with and it hasn't really been a problem all preseason but in this particular match is we are taking a ton of shots but very few are on target. Only four of the 14 that we have attempted have actually been within the frame of the goal. Ruaba looking to get it started in his box, sending it long. It'll be settled down by Gonzalez. Ramirez pushing it up the right wing. Espinosa is there. He has a man on him. I love the mohawk from Espinosa. Didn't realize that when we signed him. Ramirez playing it forward. Cordero wide to Espinosa. Tries to cross it. It's blocked by Amud. Espinosa gets it back. Espinosa with a drive. He'll put it across the face of the goal mouth. And it will be tipped behind by the keeper. So a corner opportunity for Saprisa. Looking to tie this up from the set piece. Cordero sending it in. Save made. Rebound comes to Daniel Herrera. And his first goal of the year will equalize this match 
at one. Second chance opportunities being the name of the game for both sides. Now, Cordero is a bit knackered, so we're going to bring in uh, Ronald Gubane as our right back. Although he's more of a left kind of guy, so we'll swap Herrera onto that right side. Stefan Nikista also a bit tired, so Emmanuel Chacon is going to replace him. And Esteban Cordero will take over at Strikers. We look to make three changes with about 20 minutes remaining in this match. It's 1-1 one, one and another corner for Herrera to send in. Looking near post, can't find Innocente or Gonzalez, but Gonzalez will play it back for Marrero, who drills it from 20 yards out. His first call of the year, and it's Cartagena's one, Saprissa two. I honestly do believe taking advantage of set pieces is going to be a huge part of our success moving forward into this season. I think we, on paper, are going to have the best team in Costa Rica. We just need to translate that onto the continental level, which is why we are still looking at players and still looking to make more moves, even though we've already added four or five so far this season. Ball headed away. Marrera's going to control it. About a minute and a half remaining in regular time. We'll see how much gets added on by the fourth official. Ramirez carrying it up that left wing faster than anybody else. Playing it into the middle. Espinosa looking to settle it down. Drops it for Herrera. Back for Espinosa. Good give and go. Espinosa tucks it inside that far post. His first goal of the year. An assist for Daniel Herrera. Yet another goal contribution for the 19-year-old. And Saprissa running away with it. It's now Cartagena's one. Saprissa three. And the cross went over everybody. Espinosa did the smart thing. And he took it wide. Laid it back to Herrera. Who played it back to the right winger. Who was able to beat Ruaba for the goal. Almost offside, but not quite. And the four minutes added on at the end, well, they're pretty much going to come and go, but a last-ditch opportunity. Marrera, Kubane, just a little bit too strong, and that's going to go over. So that final opportunity falls by the wayside, but it doesn't matter. Saprissa picks up a 3-1 victory, and we start off our first full season at the club, well, with a little bit of hardware. Always love the trophy lift. Can never get enough of the football manager trophy lift. A very good start to the year, but we don't want to rest on our laurels now, do we? It did seem like it was our halftime team talk that did the trick as we win the Supercopa again for the second consecutive year. Meanwhile, Herediano have been all over us trying to sign away Steven Aquista. The 19-year-old has been our best defensive midfielder since the midway point of last season. And frankly, we're lucky because he doesn't want to go. The eve of our first opening stage match against AD Sarchi is a perfect time to catch up on the transfer business. First, a look at our preseason. As you can see, we were very successful. That draw against Liberia... Yeah, that was slightly disappointing. However, it wasn't as if we didn't have our opportunities and we did not dominate that match in our own way. We just couldn't find the back of the net. Before we get to the players that we have added to our squad, let's talk about some subtractions. Orlando Galo, the 29-year-old defensive midfielder, wasn't really getting a ton of playing time with us. He wanted out. Al Riyad came a-knocking. We were selling with all of our additions at wing, we felt like 19-year-old Luis Gonzalez would be better served playing elsewhere. He has gone to Cartagena for $215,000. Also out the door is 21-year-old South African Ronald Gubane. Now, we actually got a little rooked on this one. We sold him to Cape Town City, which is the team that he was originally bought from. So Cape Town City got 20% of the purchase profit of their own purchase of their former player. Gubane was talented, however, injury prone and not very adaptable. Yes, we would have liked to have kept the 21 year old around, but we had a glut of foreigners. It was between him and Innocente. We, as in me, signed Innocente last year. So Innocente is the one who gets to stay. We also managed to sell Manuel Cortez to Montagua. He was the first signing of the Billy Flynn regime when we took over in the middle of the previous season. He did an excellent job for us as our goalkeeper, but with the addition of Mohamed Kante, Cortez was superfluous. We bought him for 48000 sold him for seventy nine, so we made a little profit on the side. We also sent some of our extra youngsters out on loan. Federico Ramirez is off to Cariari Picochi. 
Steven Alpazar, who could man our defensive midfield in the future. Not quite ready at 17. We've loaned him to Punta Arenas. And we're also hoping for a little bit of seasoning for a promising young center back, 17-year-old Esteban Morales, out on loan to Golfito. But I know we're all here for the in, so let's start small. Promising player for the future. Actually, very good. He has a nose for the net. He can finish. 17-year-old Leonardo Arias. He's already capped four times and scored two goals at the U-20 level for Costa Rica. Scored a pair of goals in our last friendly. He's intelligent, a little unsporting, but you know what? I kind of like that in a striker. May only stand at five foot ten, but as I said, his technique is tremendous and he has a nose for the net. Also coming in on the free is 25-year-old Croatian winger Willem Gets His physicals are absolutely fantastic. One of the most agile players that we have found so far in our scouting. His dribbling ability is also phenomenal. Good passing, decent vision. His crossing ability is okay as well. He expects to be a star player, which gave me a little bit of pause when we were signing him. But honestly, with all of the other options out there, Gets was the best. He's valued at about $2 million. I think we are going to have a true star on our hands with gets and finally also at no charge we added 27 year old kosovan international Vitan tusha he can play in any of the attacking positions good dribbling finishing first touch his technique also very nice highly determined player as well good amount of pace on him he stands at six foot 176 pounds he's rated as a star player at this level and he loves the big matches so we love Vitan tusha now, before we jump into the match, one very quick personnel note. We did add a number of foreign players. A couple of them we shipped out. We still have six, and we can only register five, which means Ramon, well, he's the odd man out. The 31-year-old Brazilian has been unregistered for this match. We have tried to sell him. His agent hasn't found anyone, and uh, sadly, as of right now, Ramon isn't going to react too kindly to being farmed out, but... Hopefully that will change. Our home opener, our season opener, is going to see a ton of fresh faces. Here's the lineup. Mohamed Conte is in goal. A back four of Daniel Herrera, Nassim Innocente, Freddy Gonzalez, and Hugo Cordero. Akista and Emmanuel Chacon are going to man the midfield. Out on the wings, two brand new faces. Vitan Tusha on the left. Willem gets on the right. Marrera is going to be at the 10. And as our striker today, it will be... Edward Lopez. Anything short of victory will be frankly unacceptable and will make me question my ability to lead this team into the future. I think we made some good moves in the offseason. Here is where we are going to find out. It's a Prisa at home. We are in our purple kits with the white chevron. A.D. Sarchi is in. Is that yellow? My short-term memory isn't exactly what I would love it to be. Early opportunity, though, for Saprisa. Off of the corner kick into the middle. Jimenez, though, will come off his line and deal with that pretty easily. One thing I do want to note that we haven't really talked about is we actually did make an alteration to the size of our pitch. While it was incredibly wide and that served us very well with the way we played, it was also, well, it was on the shorter side, as are most pitches here in Costa Rica. We decided to make it a little bit longer. We left the width. Nice steal by Getz, by the way, as he carries it forward. Plays it ahead. Lopez can't win the header. Cordoba's going to settle it down. Played forward. Fioli is in, and Conte is up to the task. A brilliant save by the keeper that we were so very glad to land his services this year. Sanchez to send in the corner into the middle, looking near post, and Asente will deal with it, and Chacon will send that long. We figured that we could also take advantage of our speed and our natural fitness by making the pitch longer than most in Costa Rica, and I don't think that our opposition, for the most part, is going to be sufficiently built to be able to handle those conditions. However, I could be wrong, especially if A.D. Sarchi is able to take advantage of this corner and find themselves on top in this match, 27 minutes in. Sent in, dealt with pretty easily by Herrera, but that's going to go behind. And another corner opportunity from that far side for A.D. Sarchi. Sanchez looking to deliver once again. Has five men in the box, so not really 
a lot of offensive pressure they put on on those set pieces. It is cleared away, and A.D. Sarchi is able to get it back. Less than five minutes to go in the first half. Marrera with a corner opportunity for Saprisa. Can't pick out his man. However, Cordoba put his hands on Lopez, pushed him down. The arm is up. A penalty has been called, and the spot has been indicated. So Hugo Cordera, the 19-year-old, will step up and deliver. We have noticed in the time that he has played that Cordero has an absolute rocket of a shot, and he took advantage from the penalty spot in Saprissa, taking a 1-0 lead. Absolutely nothing Jimenez could do about that one. Even though he guessed correctly, his reaction time was far inferior to the speed of Hugo Cordero's shot. So after 45 minutes, we find ourselves with a 1-0 lead. Now, we do have to worry a little bit about complacency. We're playing well, but not perfectly. A.D. Sarchi is leading in possession. A.D. Sarchi has found the target as many times as we have, even though they have taken three fewer shots. So while we are getting opportunities, we're finding the same situation that we had already touched on earlier in this episode where we are getting the shots off, but actually hitting the target, well, that's a different story. 20 minutes remaining, A.D. Sarchi with a free kick. We are going to look to make some substitutions after this set-piece play. Sarchi from a dangerous position. Cordoba is going to take it. Now, it's pretty much straight on, and his shot is going to be wayward. So, ultimately, no harm, no foul. Tusha is going to move up to the striker position. Lopez is going to come out and be replaced by William Ramirez. Freddy Gonzalez on a yellow card makes me a little bit nervous. So we are going to bring in Michael Sambarto, who is going to flip-flop places with Nassim Innocente because Sambarto is more of a more of a left-footed player anyway. Less than 20 minutes to go. 10-3, your shots on goal in favor of Saprisa. 1-0 on the scoreboard. Honestly, I was hoping that our offensive output was going to be a bit more impressive. Now, it may take a little while for the new members of this team to fully bed in with the tactic and each other. Terrible turnover, however, in our own end. Akista knocking it away, but still won by A.D. Sarchi. And again, a second time. Salinas into the box, finds Acuna. His shot will rocket off of the Conte and the post, and it will be cleared. Ramirez pushing it forward. Akista looking to start the counterattack in the middle. Shot cone. He's got Moreira. Had to come back for that one a little bit. Moreira, tough bit of dribbling knocked away by A.D. Sarchi and ultimately it looks like they will take over or at least mute our offensive attack. Not an impressive victory but a victory nonetheless. The three points count the same no matter which way you slice it. A 45th minute penalty by Hugo Cordero. The difference. Saprisa wins 1-0. With four saves, Conte was named man of the match but we find ourselves sixth on the table because of our lackluster Plus one goal difference. Hopefully we'll be able to improve that in the coming days. Also, I hope we can improve our form as we get ready to meet Alancho FC in Group C action of the Central American Cup. That's coming up tomorrow. If you like that video, make sure you hit the thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not. Thank you to everyone who has helped support the channel over the last couple of months since this series began. I love you all. Hope to see you all tomorrow for more Football Manager action. Until then, bye-bye.